Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Welcome to The Advocate, where we dissect, analyze, and put forward solutions to issues that matter to all of us. On today's edition, Sandra is asking, what's your 911? or go-to number in times of emergency. As a matter of emergency, Uche is looking to unlock the chains of mental slavery. That is assuming it only requires one key. Ekene is out to unlock the matter of our national identity and mission by crusading for a return of history lessons to our schools. Whilst Liberus sets out to give us a history lesson of his own, he says the iniquities of the past can only be reconciled by taking up where we left off on the matter of leadership. He is calling for an Igbo presidency come 2023. I want both a preservation of past and the laying of right foundations for the future in our practice of architecture. You could say our advocacies are both common sense and practical building blocks towards national development. I'll be laying the foundation after the break. Are the structures we erect not a reflection of how we perceive our nation's glory? Now, from Alex Ekweme to Namadi Sambo, two vice presidents who are or were architects, Nigeria is incredibly behind in architectural design, education, and history. In their time, neither helped make progressive narratives. Ekweme, as a practitioner in his earlier professional life, did make an impact with a number of his works. Sambo, never. Ekweme and his generation actually frittered away any goodwill or design progress they secured and the schools of design were left to deteriorate, <clears throat> as with all other areas of our education system. Today, very few architects share whatever knowledge they have. Many have even abandoned acquiring and improving their design knowledge. They hardly have an institute that could be the voice of the politics and administration of the profession. The best kinds of work are given out to foreign professionals by untrusting clients many who suffer from an inferiority complex, and some who truly want good building design. Affordable housing is fast becoming a pipe dream. Cities harbor increased numbers of slums. A lawyer has been in charge of the Ministry of Housing for the last five years. Buildings of merit are regularly bastardized instead of being marked as listed for their design significance. Take the National Museum in Onikon, Lagos. I dread the day a pompous architect of poor ability will sink his or her claws into it and desecrate the complex. The design destruction of Marina holds enough proof that I'm not far off the mark. It is time for a new way of doing things, and I put forward the following. If existing universities will not get their act together, it's time for new dedicated schools of design. Architects need to take design far more seriously, whether it is inspiration from the past this needs to happen fast. The Ministry of Works should be headed by an architect, assisted by another building industry professional. Quantity surveyors or cost consultants must tighten up as there really is no way that they will not be fingered in contract sum inflation and fixing. It is important that a small committee of engineers and surveyors assist ministerial work in the housing department. Then we need to list exemplary works of design and architecture and enforce that they cannot be demolished, but rather repaired and repurposed. Then more lawyers ought to learn building law and be familiar with the standard conditions of building contract. We cannot continue to live like a lost tribe. We need to protect, maintain, and renew our environment. No one will do it for us. 
Yeah, I like the fact that you've laid out your 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 thing with the proposition. So it's, okay. it actually looks like something people can enforce. But when you talk of dedicated schools of design, yeah. So I wanted to ask, how do you feel that will differ to universities? Because they, you know the failings. What are the failings of universities? Have we identified them? And how do you feel setting up new institutions will now rectify I can, that problem? I can I can guess okay. an answer to that. Okay. Um, in in studying law in the universities, you. After graduating from the university, you still go to the Nigerian Law School. Right. Yes, you have the basics in the university. There's also what we call advanced learning. Mm -hmm. And so the universities, in some cases, yes, might not be able to catch up as fast as the institutes who will maybe major speci specializations would be, or, you, you know. Because the university will be more interested in first and foremost laying foundation and then grooming to a certain state, the standards as you are there before you begin to take it from a, to advanced level. But those institutes, maybe one year, six months programs, will be major in designs, the new laws as regards building and the rest. And you know what's, what should be? Most developing countries have all of this, mm -hmm. but here okay, we just believe that of architecture. yes, yeah. every everything now has specialty. Mm -hmm. Everything, has, even no, plumbing. I, I was plumbing. To ask, you know, because he mentioned things that have, go towards the unity between architects. The fact that you know they don't get behind uh, the politics of they don't speak with one voice. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a failing of the individuals, if you like. That's so will that necessarily point. change if you set up new institutions? When it's within the university, the problem is that the university has a way of standardizing its standards okay. and it just doesn't fit for design that's why the most successful schools of design are on their own like Parsons or the architectural association in London basically schools of when you have a school of art or a school of design and you, you know many Chelsea school of art they work much better they've, they've got and if they're in a the university they've got to have semi-autonomy that problem existed when I was in university and they had to change the way the architecture department of UCL worked so that it could be almost, it was semi-autonomous okay. from, you know, even though it was still University of London, but they had to do it because it wasn't working for the course. Okay. They were basically destroying the school. Okay. The other so, only two points was really, I'm not sure I agree with you that we need to have an architect as the Minister of Housing and Works because it's broader than just architecture. It's uh, dealing with so many more things. And I, otherwise, you will now say that every ministry must have a specialist at the helm. And I'm not convinced. You just need a businessman who is ready to consult with architects, somebody who has a brain to solve problems. Be open to consultation. You see, the UK is different from Nigeria. In Nigeria, we have problems of seriousness at our work, of exposure and everything. Yeah. We are not yet at a we'll point where first. a lawyer like Fashola should be the Minister of Housing. We are not there yet. It you, should be an architect, you know, engineer, that, or somebody that, for now. We have, we, we, we've got to, you know, we don't have enough meat in that section to start bringing all sorts of other minds. You, you know, we look, at, we look at these things basically from an um, administrative point of view only. Only. Without actually looking at the meat. Feeling, the, the emotions. Feeling of it. And, and then, you know, what do you feel about giving house, people what, affordable house, housing? The the house, 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 house. housing is beyond just building, we exactly. acquire a large expansion, yeah, yeah, exactly. mm -hmm. and then we just want to yeah. build. Yeah. It's beyond that. What you can, from my per mm -hmm. perspective, I believe what he's saying is, also talks about design, mm -hmm. talking about proper planning, yes. new towns. Mm -hmm. You know, all of this, it's much more than what a lawyer can just see. Yeah. But what about the social about implications that are much more than a, an architect can? Oh, no, no, that's wrong. That's, see, why, that's, that's why you talk about that's, consultation yeah, as well. Exactly. So he can consult a lawyer who understands well, You think it's more social. about architecture? It's Housing more, and it's, works is more about what, architecture? No, no, no. It's more about, it's about planning, planning see, and, it's about and planning. planning. Yeah. What, what it is is that there's, there's a lot of law in building. Notice I said that lawyers... It's, should, it's, it's, should it's shocking that, you know, so lawyer, you see lawyers that boast, I'm a petroleum lawyer, I'm a marine lawyer. Somebody should actually be boasting that he's a construction lawyer, mm, and okay. there's a lot for him to do there. Even now, we sign contracts one, and the there are no lawyers The only around. construction lawyers, no lawyers are around. Property. 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 That's, that's, that's property. property. That's property, property. law. You, you know, but construction itself, if yes. I bring out the standard conditions of contract, you will see that it needs a lawyer. Yeah, we yeah, sign contracts with that lawyer. You see, Chuka, you see, right why now. we have all of this, okay, why we have all of this is because I do not see any reason why the houses in, in Ikoi should be given way to high rise. Mm -hmm. You can leave yeah, Ikoi the way. In the way, way you can leave the way okay. Ikoi is yeah. be, for history purpose. Mm -hmm. Correct. And then create a new town for those high rise. Yeah. And but a situation where 
you know, you're trying to now describe the way Koyi was to a, a young Impressive. child. He doesn't know. It's impossible. It's impossible. And, and, and so, you find that's where you go to Dubai, you say, old Dubai, yes, new, new Dubai. Dubai yeah. You know? But here, you believe that, yes, old Koyi has a big land, you just buy, and then mm -hmm. everybody gets approval. Yeah. All the is just all Once the you can made, pay the cost, not... you, you get approval. But we should, I, I understand from the point of view of less, because we are not where we should be. Mm -hmm. So we don't, we can't afford to just leave it in the hand of anybody. Exactly. It's like a plane taking off. When you get to that height where you can But you know, cruise, he also made the point, ironically, that it. both vice presidents that were architects didn't even make the impact. Just being no an impact. architect yeah. in they itself no will in not the mean country. that you do the You're necessary capable. thing. Yes. You right. need to be a thinking person. They left architecture into politics, and so they were not discussing mm. <laughs> Like, tell me fashion, and as a minister, I no longer talk, a talk lawyer, law. Right. Just, just, just also to add, you know, the place of the university, what the, the role of the university, and right. I think after the four walls of the university, what's left for you as an individual, right. you as an architect, what mm -hmm. are you going to do to develop yourself? Yeah. So you can, as much as possible, go out there to build your own, to improve your, your capacity on designs and not wait for the government to come do something for you for or you. something. So I think the individual well, architect... Do they have those well, schools in Nigeria to help you develop your capacity? You can, Isn't you that know, where you're looking we, for we those specialists? We don't, we don't, we don't right now. So, mm. Well, you, know, you can, also, you are, you can go out. Abroad. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> that's abroad, where everybody's going to. This is one topic I'll never tire of revisiting, mm. especially to it as, it, as it's all around us. There'll be more actually. <laughs> yes, yes I'm, not, I'm not yet done. <laughs> anyway, after the break, Sandra is wondering when we'll tire of playing at emergency and actually get it right. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they want. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. The purpose of a drill is so that when the real emergency occurs, everyone is ready. Is it possible that I missed the drill? 911, what's your emergency? Well, we all know that this isn't a Nigerian phrase, but how hard is it to get to this point as a country? Year after year, we are faced with tragedies in the country, such that schools have been avoided, or at least mitigated, if only we had an effective emergency response unit. On the 19th of January 2020, Lagosians at the Abule Egba axis of the state experienced yet another Black Sunday as the pipeline exploded, leading to massive loss of lives as well as properties. This is happening barely a year after the last incidents of a pipeline explosion in that same area on the 18th of December 2018. Recall also that Agbule Egba has been on the news for pipeline vandalism and explosion as far back as 2006. It is said uh, that while another continent suffers a wildfire as a result of natural occurrence, our country suffers such worse predicaments as a result of hungry Nigerians who would rather risk their lives and that of others as a glimmer of hope in pipeline vandalism. A sad video I watched of the tragic incident depicted a young man agitated, clearly in distress and unsure of where to run to, alleging that people in that area had previously reported pipeline vandalism to authorities on several occasions, but government had failed to act on it. He called on people on the public to help reach relevant authorities to save them. There was even a distressed tweet on social media about four hours before the inferno, warning members of the community of the smell of petrol that had filled the air. Clearly, this wasn't taken with any act of seriousness or urgency. During the pandemonium, there was also an image trending across social media 
that displayed emergency numbers of fire services, I couldn't help but notice that these so-called emergency hotlines all began with 080 and some random digits by various network providers. Nigeria, which way? How do we expect a caller in distress? I imagine with shaky hands and a phone unwilling to stay balanced to remember an 11 digit code in an emergency situation. Or is social media the distress number to call in such times? How long will it take us for us to learn our lessons and apply appropriate preventive measures? How many lives would we need to mourn before the government and authorities swing into action? How many properties would we lose to infernos before the evil of oil vandalism is halted? Well, beyond this recent fire explosion, this is an SOS advocacy call for the government to initiate a universal national emergency number, a short code and easy to remember by the educated and uneducated, such as the 911 applicable in the United States. If we are going to battle with other failed systems the country is currently facing, at least help us feel a little safer, knowing that when we call, there is someone to answer swiftly. Then just maybe we can ease the tension on God every time Nigerians have to scream his name at the slightest emergency. Yeah, well... There's God. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I completely agree with your advocacy, as in we should have, you know, maybe a three-digit number that we can, anybody can dial. Um, I, I remember when we had a fire, and we were even looking for the fire brigade's number, mm. and we never, we didn't find it, actually. And uh, even when somebody did call, it took them forever to show up. And when they finally showed up, the fire was already done with, you know, so it was almost like they were, they were showing up after the fact. Um, I do believe that it is time for us to, to get these things into place because mm -hmm. we are having so many of these um, incidents happening every single day. And uh, we, we just can't continue to leave things for it's people. Old. You know, I, I see people carrying buckets of water. They're acting as the, the, the fire brigade. I see people, you know. And their lives are yeah. also at risk and in exactly. such instance. I'll bust your bubble. There is no hope. There's not this. No, no, no. We have to. Let me, let me, let me. Yeah. Like there is this. no hope. Let's not, um, let's not dismiss. Ourselves. But yeah, but Chuka in fact, the point about... I wanted to finish was mm. that. I, but I do, I do. Yes, I, I do agree with you to an extent. We can't even put together a normal database. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been collecting information. God knows what. We can't mm -hmm. put together one database. The way nine one one works is that as soon as you call, they're able to track that call to a specific area, and so Correct. the response time is very <clears throat> short. short. Now. Even if we get a three-digit number, the, will our computers work? Do they even have the information on it yeah. to be able to track that call mm -hmm. and respond in record why time? But, but, why I'm saying there's no hope, let's not deceive our heart. So, All of I'm these like services are ordinarily provided by government at the local level, mm -hmm. including planning, including access roads. Mm -hmm. And then you have a central base where all of them can key into mm -hmm. for connectivity. Mm -hmm. But here, we are busy daily killing government at the local level. Mm -hmm. We starve them of all. Now, I can tell you that local government is virtually non-existent. Exactly. Yeah. And so, you're talking about fire service and the basic services that should come to the man at the grassroots. If we do not go back to starting government from the very basics, local level, all of yeah. these things, we'll just yeah. be seeing them and we'll dream. It won't work. Even radio stations have short codes. Mm, mm, and, and so, why can't national uh, no, uh, government Sorry, have short I, I agree with what you're saying. However, I know there are short codes, but we need to empower local governments or we're going to suffer mm. more than we know. Mm. But um, I, the, the incident really was just to say, I saw a dead body lying on the road and I drove and I saw this dead body, but I was able to ask a friend, one of the advocates, and they gave me a, a short note. I think it was one, two, one. They do have those short numbers. One, 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 two, one, yes. Two. But they don't publicize it enough. Nope. And, I, I, and this is where we're suffering. You he know, if, they, if everybody knew one, one, two, and they mm -hmm. called, and their response was, you know, admirable. Not only did they find out where it was happening, they got in touch with me afterwards. They checked that the thing was done. We were in conference, and it was done. What I'm talking about local government, when you go to some other senior societies, yeah. Yeah. you don't even need to bring water with your truck. Yeah. You have pipes. Already. The moment you get there, you, you connect you to it. Yes. Yeah. But here in some the cases, they will tell you that there's no water in the no. tank. Yeah. Yeah. You need to go and fetch water. Yeah. Yeah. The one that happened in Onicha, the state fire service was far off. It yeah. took the response from the one in Asaba. As yes. big as Onicha market is, yes. to tell you that there is no 
steady fire station in the whole of the market. And these are all preventative measures we can put in place. There's no hope. So even the overturned tanker, just even say, the overturned tanker we that cause the gridlock just okay if, some last that thing week happened in the night right. by the morning now so last week, instead yes, that no. thing took a whole day and people all the way back as far as Awuya mm -hmm. were affected yeah, yeah, yeah. by an overturn tanker on Uzumbambadi I yes. couldn't understand yeah. that kind of thing yeah. because yeah. really they should have kicked into action yeah. so it's but, preparedness mm, I think I think really you know we have to spread we have to get this number sorted out yeah it's and urgent. then um, and then we have to spread the word it has to be a part of school teaching even. Yeah. So by the time you're three years old, four years old, you're already know learning just one, 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 just one, one or whatever it is. Yeah. Even this pushing government is what we can do. We mustn't relent to Database, what we can that's do. what this is. Yeah, that's about. my own. Because we, we need can, to map we, out we can have country. all the numbers we can you want, start, but at least no we can data start somewhere. The yeah. US started from no, then, somewhere. Then, then I'm sure that when they started, it wasn't perfect. First. Yeah, it, has it to won't be, the be the, it won't be the number first, but mm. at least there is a response to emergency. There mm. is something that we can go to when something negative. No, but even without the database, we have Google Maps. You can track. Right. Most we're places are maxed out. No, you're call, Thank God you're using you're the word call. again. We are not we're prepared. Not prepared but doesn't mean that there isn't hope. Because yes. I believe exactly. so that there That's is where hope. I differ from yeah. It might take a while. Yeah. It might take probably a few years. But at least we're few. talking about it now. <laughs> yes. right. Like we're Sandra, talking about Sandra, it now. Don't start my, it now. We're talking about it now. Last week I talked about Vision 2020. And look at where we are. As at that time, when we told people that, look, forget it, there is no hope. They said, no, no, don't give up. 30 years away and all that. today, 30 years later, we are worse off that than when we before, created yeah. Why I said there is no hope, there is no, we create visions, but there is no effort to achieving those this missions. This is part of that effort. This is part so, of the effort. Yes, I you have. The That's why I'm saying that until, few individuals until can come I begin to, to see government, thing. you look at governance from the local level and say, look, you know what? This government is the government that is closest to the people. Yeah, I like this local mm. level you're so, talking about. No, let us yeah, start yeah, yeah. it from there. Local All problems are local. We need to empower local governments. Well, yeah. we advocate so the measures can be put in place against the next emergency. After the break, Uche is taking both preventive and creative approach to a condition she and Kanye West have identified as mental slavery. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually worked. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. I seem to be moving in celebrity circles these days. Yeah. Kanye West and I. When rapper producer Kanye West used the term mental slavery to express his beliefs about slavery, suggesting that enslaved Africans were mentally enslaved because they stayed in that position despite their numbers, there was instant widespread outrage and condemnation. I, however, agree with Mr. West, and I'll tell you why. Mental slavery is far more destructive than physical slavery. Though we see no physical chains, the devastating effects are felt and transmitted across generations. Mental slavery is a state of mind where one becomes trapped by misinformation about self and the world. The legacy of slavery has promoted the direct association between being African and being inferior. It also promotes ways of thinking which continue to impede growth and development. Ali Shahada correctly states that the African mindset is at best an observer complaining about the world as opposed to being a change agent in the world. Mental slavery invariably leads to a warped view of reality and the world in general. The manipulation is mostly perpetrated via mainstream media, religion and education. This ensures that we receive our information without any suspicion from the very same people that said Africa is a dark and savage continent. 
We're brainwashed to believe that we're better off with them than with our own people. Every concept from notions of beauty to values is infected by this disorder. We allow the West to dictate our standard of beauty, making bleaching and cosmetic surgery highly desirable. Africans on the whole prefer to demonstrate wealth through material things such as shoes, clothes and cars, instead of through educational development like others. Failure to know oneself results in failure to identify self-interest, making us an obvious target for exploitation and oppression. Another telltale sign of mental slavery is victimhood. This is a condition that must be done away with at all costs, as it serves no positive purpose, but as a statement of inferiority, not pride. Everything is how somebody did something to us, how someone hates us, how someone stole from us, but what are we doing about it apart from complaining? Mental slavery diminishes creativity, creates inertia, and thus makes us impotent. We know what we want, but unaware of how it is obtained in the real world. We can see the importance of history and owning media, factories, and so on, but all those small steps on the ladder that lead to success, such as unity, organization, investment of time, support, spending, escape us. We want a revolution, but we do not want to lose anything. We want to be healthy, but we eat rubbish all day. We want justice in the world, as long as it doesn't cause us to lose something. The first step to recovery is recognizing we're inflicted with this disorder. Then understanding who we are as a people, our history and value system. The next is to stop waiting for the system to change. Rather, we should use all the tools at our disposal to do for ourselves. Instead of waiting to receive free handouts, we need to realize the necessity for education, planning, strategy, dedication, and hard work. Which education are you referring to now? We've been because the only, meaningful, for a while. the only meaningful education today is, the education. is somehow Western education. You know, but I, I, I want I to agree. also understand you know, you So somehow. there's a big problem here. I see people, you go to the embassy, you behave, you know, you're trying to protect your visa. Because you believe these people are superior. If I don't yeah. behave now, they won't give me a visa. Exactly. And, and yeah. if you feel, look, I just want to explore the world. If you give me, fine. If you don't give me... Uh, yeah, you might even get the visa, yeah. you know. So they will see you as, oh, this man is being normal. Mm. Is, you know? Mm. So I, I understand you that this idea of, you know, you just box yourself in that corner. And they're um, expecting that, you know, this is the way the world will behave. It's the same issues I was talking about last time. I don't, I'm not one to conform to norms. Oh, you must be with one woman. You must be with uh, these are Igbo ways. <laughs> African your ways wife is in on it. Is we have no problem. Different. No, I'm, I just gave an example. Mm. African ways are different. Yeah, exactly. Speaking in the third person. Mm. Mm. Uh, you know, so we have our, our standards, <laughs> our morals, our way of life. You can blend the two because the world has become a global thing. Uh -huh. But to be trapped in one and believe that is the best, mm. that Christianity is the best, mm. uh, than my own uh, Alika worshiping. That I will not agree, mm -hmm. because that is what the white man told you. For me, it's a mental slavery. Mm -hmm. And that's why Bob Marley says that emancipate yes. yourself emancipate from yourself. mental slavery. None yeah. better self can free our minds. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's somewhere in between, because listening to you, what came to my mind is that, like what Chuka started off saying, is that the world is such that if somebody is, has already developed and mm -hmm. done something, mm -hmm. and you can see that what they're doing is working, there's nothing wrong in you. learning from them. Absolutely. You, you know, those who have a chip on their shoulder and say, I won't take the white man's things, they're sure. fooling themselves because yeah. you can't avoid that. The world is interactive. I mean, but, but what, sorry, what came to my mind also was, you know, the, the way these things work, when you look at a classroom setting, it's like peer pressure. A child who knows where they're from, they go into a classroom. Sometimes when they see people who are maybe they're used to defining themselves according to material things, they get into the class and they start saying, but my friend did mm -hmm. party pack, I want to do party pack. Right. But but if you instill in the child that the value of who you are is not tied up with those things, those things. hopefully, so that's the same way I see Western mm -hmm. influences or any influence. If you know who you are and you know that what, who you are is not tied to mm -hmm. external things, then it doesn't matter where you are in the world. It doesn't matter what they dangle in front of you. You won't accept it. Exactly. Just, just you know, she has said exactly said my right. point. And, you yeah. know, we can't deny the fact that, you know, the Western culture, they're more developed and, you know, they have... Um, 
let me let me use the word everything beautiful, mm. right? That we. I, I will question that. Well, but that's why I said let exactly. me use the word. Yeah. They have beautiful things that is worthy of admiration. So there is nothing wrong to admire and to also want to you know adopt these things for yourself. Right. But in doing so, what values are you holding on to? What mm. values are you keeping exactly. for yourself? Mm. So you know, I think it's just being able to strike a balance between globalization and you know. You know, protecting your own your culture. Own, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because it's just someone, like me, yeah. I would, if not for family, I would mm. rather spend Christmas in the village mm. than spend Christmas in New York. Mm. Because for me, it's it's not me. Mm. But for somebody else, you know, that's life. Mm. So it's there's a balance. Mm. There's yeah. always a balance. There's always a but balance. there are some people who are that's why you call it slavery. Mm. Mm -hmm. They are slaves to distance, and they feel oh, without this one. They really cannot, you, they can't, you know, they can't define who they are. Yes. And so until you want to go out, okay, I, I, I visited a lady, let's take a walk, let's sit down somewhere and drink. Ah, no, I don't have makeups, I can't go out like oh, this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so she's a slave to makeup. Yes. Yeah. In the end, we're still living in a technological mm. world and they're far That's ahead the balance. of us. Then you can come back and particularize. Yes, no, because I, I, like I understand school, what you're saying. Like yeah. law school, go and study law in yeah. Harvard. You still yeah, come that's back. Right. So I get you. If I pick yeah. up a motivational book re written by somebody from California. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, yeah. I get your his point. Style, his uh, environment. I can't read it. Yeah. You know, by yeah. the time you finish reading it, you come to the house, there's no light. You, how do you do it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know? Yeah. But he doesn't have to deal with all of this. All of that, yeah. Yeah. And so that's why I said, I, I OK, don't. I get you. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, just to add to this, mm. We need to understand who we are as a people. The funny thing is that the the Europeans, the Westerners, they understand who okay. Africans are. Like my professor would say, if you are not born with a silver spoon, make one and put it in your yeah. mouth. Yeah. Now that's, that's what we're talking about right the there. Motivational speaker. <laughs> that's it. From Nigeria. Well, there you go. I don't know Don't you he understands. yourself in this whole mental slavery thing, mm. but you know, hopefully if you can identify yourself, maybe you should start doing something about it. So your feedback is definitely a valuable part of our self-evaluation. On governors using religion as a tactic to deceive and blind people, Akinyela Jones says, finally, people start waking up to the realization that re religion is a scam. Um, not sure that was what we were saying, Akinyele. However, on the same topic, Batinji Jokes and Fitness says, stop deceiving yourselves on this because you all know what to do. Come on, side talkers. Huh. <laughs> Batinji Jokes and Fitness seems to be an action person. On the diamonds among the rough, Bola Alabi says, Wow, I'm very impressed with both of them, Makinde and Babagana. Well done, guys. Thanks, Bola. We keep at holding them accountable, though. Lecky Jays gives us an excellent scorecard, too. He says, I predict Plus TV Africa will soon become the best TV station in Nigeria. Hallelujah. I'm going to drop that right there. We yes, we claim it. Thank you, Lecky Jays. We say a big amen to that. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Ekene says we can't go forward without first going back. Back to our history after the break. A cry for restoration is indicative of the fact that the thing in question ought not to have been taken away in the first place, don't you think? Watching a video of Onyeko Nwenu recently as she spoke about her personal experience during and just after the Biafran War, and it was apparent that the lessons of that era were etched in her mind and soul such that she was able to speak with intent at the Never Again conference. So let me ask a question that many have asked before me. Why again did we take history out of our school curriculum? What are we afraid of? We look at the disconnect between our policies and how they impact or fail to impact on our dysfunctional society. And it is apparent that a lack of national identity is at the heart of this disconnect. It's time we got real with ourselves and identify our strengths and weaknesses as a people. History is the best teacher in the school of people discovery. It paves the way for a future that is free from recycled errors. 
The World War experience was one of the inspirations behind the European Union. The reasoning that building a better union in Europe would ensure that the World War experience never again repeats itself. Here we are in Nigeria, a bouquet of cultures and ethnic groups. The need for history in schools and in our media outlets is key to building a more secure, stable future for all of us, especially in the current climate where the opposite is evident. I'm aware that the policy was passed last year to bring back history to our schools, and so this is when the real work begins. We need schools to be held accountable to act in accordance with this policy. We need good history books and good history teachers. We all have a part to play in this. I propose we personally wage a campaign in our schools, like I've just said, for a national curriculum that tells the comprehensive and interrogative history of Nigeria. More than ever, it's time to bring back our history. I totally agree with you on this. You know, it's so important for us to go forward. We really need to know where we're coming from. I also, the thing about history, it, it instills a level of pride, a level of value, a level of self-worth in the individual. So now, going back to sometimes your makes you cry. It makes us cry. No, but it goes back to but, your sleeve. But, yeah, exactly. Sleeve mentality, yeah. um, you know, the reason Africans do better than, you know, um, Af um, the so-called African-Americans and whatever the case may be is because we still have a sense of our history. Most of them over there don't really know where they okay. come from. They don't even know, um, they don't really know our values Ancestry, and everything. Yeah. Yes, and they're grasping, they're doing their best to try and hold on to something. That's why they, they continue saying Africa, motherland and all of that. Meanwhile, they don't even fully understand what that means. Okay. Um, no, 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 some of them want to yes, they reconnect want to, yes, to motherland, but they know it's motherland. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 <laughs> they know the, it's motherland. Yeah, they know this is motherland. But those of us who have the, 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 the pride yes. of remaining and retaining the motherland mm -hmm. are gradually forgetting exactly. you know, the history. Meanwhile, those that left once you know, to imbibe yes. the history, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they, they feel, look, oh, you guys are lucky. Mm. You should be able to trace your family genealogy up to Can this. Go to exactly. But for this, I don't, I really don't know. I don't have that identity. Mm -hmm. and, and so for me, that's why history I History is about identity. Yeah. And yes. it doesn't just, okay, no, sorry, quickly. It's not mm, just about a secondary school or primary school. Mm. It should be a curriculum, even in the university, you take it as a compulsory course okay. to a certain level. Okay. Okay. And okay. so with that, you imbibe it. Mm -hmm. So you now, even in your normal life, you now want to learn and right. read about right. history. Yeah. Yeah. The thing about our history is that we, as Africans, we know that there was life be beyond the slave trade, yes. life before the slave trade. We know all these things. Now, um, the African-Americans and all those people, they don't know that. So we have that um, value system that we got from our royal days and everything, that gives us a sense of, of, of being, a sense of identity. And that also is the sort of thing that pushes us to be better, to, to maybe strive to go back to when we were you know, royalty and, and we were doing so well. Because it's amazing. If you really, really study African history, you'll be, you'll be shocked to find out that we were the first to do so many things. Mm. We built, if you see the Benin, is it the Benin, Benin Kingdom? Oh, yeah. I mean, the architecture back mm -hmm. then, mm -hmm. would yeah, anybody that's believe? Why that's that's yes, yeah, that's, you know, I was that's why it was called a city. Yes, mm -hmm. because but look at it now. Yeah. Yeah. You can't even the, see, we won't preserve anything. The Portuguese, the Portuguese writer said that Benin had, that he was amazed. Mm -hmm. And when they first came to Benin, that yeah. they had street light yes, yeah. as mm -hmm. far back yes. as at yes. that time. Mm -hmm. They had streets, all these streets. No, this local lamp. But still, it was a thought out process. And yeah. so and all the streets had lights and they had and the streets were well paved, well yes. swept. Paved and yeah. You, you, you know, see, you don't even know. And that's why that and that's is. why you find out that most um, black African Americans would rather watch this your epic movies yeah. than black the Panther. ones where you try to be like American. Yes. Yes. When I was in um, in secondary school, yeah, so the very first year, history mm. was made compulsory mm. for all students and be you science or arts, you had to take history. Okay. But at the time we got to the second um, year, which was, I think, SS2 now, history was, um, you know, it was an optional yeah. course. Yeah. It was an optional course. And at the end of the day, there were just two students in the whole school doing history. Doing oh, history. Okay. Do you know why? I didn't do history, to be honest with you. Do you know be why? Okay. You know why? Because, we, that's why I said you make it compulsory because we read 
to pass? And then also, what can I do with history? Mm. That's so the question about, on no, the no, mind no. of the when student. Coming to my point, history is good how for the How about, how about mm. um, a situation whereby the young ones are not interested? Because they see history as probably, you know, reading about dates, no, studying no. about, you know, things that happened so, in the Sandra, past and then Sandra, you want to go forward. Let me correct an no. impression. <laughs> let me correct an impression. Mass. A lot of us were not interested in maths, but, but we, it was compulsory mm. because we were made to. Mm. For history, the first question people would ask is, what will I do with it? And there's a lot you can and do. And there is a lot you can do with mm -hmm. it. And then with the loss of jobs, the, we gradually started pushing this humanities mm. to the background. You must be a professional, mm -hmm. read professional courses. Okay. And, and so you look at all the mix. You want to read law, government, uh, one social science and two uh, math and English. There is no history in the mix. Mm -hmm. So with all of that, gradually we, you know, naively pushed history to the background. There's also the point of relevance. Mm. I also got admission. My first admission was to study history. Oh, good. To <laughs> be honest with you, I history. hated it. Oh, I love history. You know, to be honest, you, I'm in the arts, I'm in humanities, but to be honest with you, I hated it wow. probably because of the way There's it was no being taught in schools. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe because they, of the way it was being what? taught in schools and everything was, oh, okay, so we, oh, we have the, you know, mindset that history is just per, and purely theoretical. You can't relate to it. <laughs> yeah, you, can't, you can't even picture it I in your see. mind. No, no, no. They just no, really, no, no. They were no. It was how we're they taught, to be honest with you. I was in love with history yeah, because of how too. I so was taught you. history. How were you no, taught? No, no. Yeah. I was taught that my history teacher, I was taught history, I won't say I fell in love with history in Nigeria. It was when I went you to the were, UK okay, okay. and then my teacher was so good at bringing it to life you know, out. that Beautiful. I could actually I was just gonna say, until it, myself just in that exactly. yes, until, yeah. it, on, until it hits you like you're watching TV. Something mm. you can picture no, it, it, it in it, your it, mind. Then it's beautiful. Let me, let me also quickly correct an impression because mm. I was in, I was taught history the way you were taught, mm. but we, we were made to understand because ours was class one to five. Yeah, same. We yeah. were made to understand that this is the way to go. And so, whether you liked it or not, okay. you wanted to be part of this new way to go. Yeah. And with time, we started understanding it, mm -hmm. irrespective of the teacher. And that was the way mathematics also. There are some people who hated mathematics, not because it was difficult, but because of the teacher. I mean, and, sorry, and, you, you, and, we and, used to and, make this point. And let me quickly, let me round up on this, please, <laughs> please, please. <laughs> okay. Because it's very important. It is, it is, it is a Kenny's topic. Yeah. It should allow us to... Like, no, I should, actually. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. So, mm. you find out that, take the history of Usman Danfo, yeah. Till mm -hmm. as I am now, mm. that was something I did in primary four. I could still tell you with dates the history of Usman yes. for Yes. Because it became part of us. We needed to mm. understand what these people did differently. The story of Mansa Musa, Vasco da Gama, yes. Amerigo yeah. Vespuce. Now that he's you know, saying it, I actually no, but want you know, to fall in love with history. I was, but, um, I mean, yeah. when I was studying no. history in Nigeria, we had all that, but we didn't have any real history on Biafra. Yeah. I don't remember why you did. But the curriculum the today yeah, apparently includes that. History the recent curriculum includes that. Yeah. The thing we need to push for, because the reasons they gave, I just want to quickly chip that in, were these reasons, and I felt they were very flimsy, uh -huh. that nobody was interested in doing history, that uh, you can't do anything with it. Those are reasons they gave. No, those are reasons they gave for trusted. taking it out of the curriculum. But unfortunately, it's not okay. a valid so reason. You like yeah. Yeah. You can you just take out. Yeah. But we need to work on getting good history books and good history teachers. Yeah, a lot of history books. When you de-emphasize it, when, when, you you a lover to teach when you de-emphasize it, yeah. people will not be interested yeah. in it. Yeah. We started emphasizing law, medicine, yeah. and all of it's those things. True. And I'm no, so you're right. people became interested It's a priority. In true. We really need to be looking at the way forward. Um, and, and empowering our teachers, getting the right textbooks. I, over to you, parents. Over to you, uh, everyone listening. I'm convinced that owning our history is at the foundation of national identity and development. After the break, Libros also speaks of reconciling past events to move forward. He speaks of the Nigerian project and Igbo presidency. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually worked. I don't think that any organization...
organisation should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonise you. To move forward, there had to be reconciliation, and to be reconciled, there must be equity. The Nigerian Project and Igbo Presidency. I'm compared to lend my voice to the politics of the Nigerian President come 2023, even while waiting for the promised next level of 2019, despite having not seen the change of 2015. Recently, Anglo Abdullah, a Northern Elder, was quoted as saying, if the Igbos won the presidency come 2023, they have to belong. I would think he's talking about belonging to the current ruling party. Anyway, I leave that to the politicians. Why it is true that Nigerian presidency had never given an advantage to any state or region that produced same, apart from the mere advantage it gives to friends, associates, and cronies of the occupant of the office, just like governors alike. But it sure gives those regions a greater sense of belonging in the project called Nigeria. Hence the consistent clamor of it's our turn to rule by the various regions who no like to rule after all. It's a notorious fact that Obasanjo and Olufalai, both from the southwestern part of Nigeria, were handed the presidential ticket of their major dominant political parties in Nigeria in 1999 as a way of placating the Southwest over the injustice meted out to one of their sons, the hero of our current democratic experience, Chief M.K. Abiola. Despite the rejection of Obasanjo by the Southwest at the poll in 1999, in the year 2003, some of the politicians from the region began to jump ship, shouting mainstream politics or power sifts. After all, politics is sweeter from the center. We also cannot forget the cry just before 2003 election of the supposed one-term agreement between OBJ, as it's fondly called, and the supposed Northern elders that gave him the ticket. If there's nothing in it, why clamor for it? The truncated presidency of Omar Musa Yaradwa, God rest his soul, who was from Kansina State, Northern Nigeria, saw another slogan of zoning or no zoning from Northern politicians why the South-South region that lays the golden egg was boiling as militancy became the order of the day. Even the hand of amnesty extended by Yaradwa administration couldn't quell same until one of theirs, good luck Jonathan, became the number one person in the country. The agitation stopped immediately. After all, nobody complains while eating. For public sympathy or maybe a sense of belonging, the Southeastern name, a Billy, in his name suddenly became conspicuous maybe to garner support from a region that barely had a shot at the Nigerian presidency, but definitely not for acceptability from the minority, inside minority like us, because he had their support until he frittered it away, by trying to please everybody and ended up pleasing nobody. We are that crossroad of history in our political experiment again, with agitations from every region for the number one seat come 2023, even though we are yet to understand the change in the next level we are in. Therefore, I think the southeastern part of Nigeria should be allowed to produce the president of Nigeria come 2023, irrespective of whether they belong or not. Since the southwest, south-south, and northern part have all had a go at it since 1999, despite Obas and John not belonging. If you know what I mean, failure which we can as well kiss our unity in diversity goodbye. Or Hanese Ndibu should be able to harness the strength of the Igbos to produce widely acceptable candidates to avoid the pitfall of 2003 where they had more than 10 candidates contesting the PDP primaries with Abbasanjo of the Southwest. My advocacy today is that if we must move forward as a nation, we must retrace our step and start from where we abandon our ship of nationhood, the era before the Civil War, to enable us to heal ourselves from the, in, from the inside, and then he, that healing can only come if we are ready to be equitable. Such equity can only be achieved if the presidency is zoned to the eastern part of the country come 2023. I might be wrong. Or you might be wrong, but we can both not be wrong. I think you're wrong. <laughs> My question. Oh, I sorry, I want to jump in. Who is right. the we? Okay, sorry. Let, sorry, you were saying something. My question is, who is the we? Which part? That's going to allow for an evil presidency in 2023. Because <laughs> I mean, it is not you so, and so, I. Let me let me not say why you. I think he's I'm wrong. I'm not talking though. to you. Let me let me, let me <laughs> say why I think. Let me not say why you. I think you're yeah, wrong. Let me say you're uh, because and I'll reference Uche's advocacy on um, mental slavery. I think it's a state of mental slavery where you, you, you see a ship that you feel is destined to sink. And instead of building a new ship, you're busy climbing on each other's heads to see who will be on top of each other. 
the shape of all this zoning thing is a, is a doomed ship. Mm -hmm. And that is what is causing all our problems. I'm telling you that even if you gave the so-called Igbo people you're referring to, because I don't even know who they are, because I'm Igbo, and you gave them this so-called Igbo, Igbo president, Let, if you gave them their so-called Igbo presidency, they will not be placated. Mm -hmm. They will not, because the same, you pointed it out, the same people who are busy, so-called uh, Yoruba or Hausa, are not even giving the people what they need. Mm -hmm. So there's this elite group who are sharing the booty, and we're busy enabling them to continue doing this nonsense. What we want is somebody who is for everybody and for nobody. We want a real, a real, I'm just referencing that. We know he didn't quite execute that. We want somebody who, I don't care where he's from, deliver for us. And the only way you placate the evil person who really cares for Nigeria is when you give them the things that are enabling to them achieving. I want a merit-based system. Let's do away with this nonsense of zoning. It will not get anyone anywhere. You me. just have more looting. I know, I know the basis on which I like the fact that you looked at every side, mm -hmm. that somehow it was a sweetener, somehow it was a healer, but you can't heal a wound with the wrong medicine. You are, you are, you are misdiagnosing the problem. The problem is not, okay, is not know, I'm coming now, you, I still have to learn this point. You yeah, cannot you heal a wound by misdiagnosing the problem. The problem is not whether you don't have an evil guy. It's because the, it, the merit-based system is, is, is ruptured. It's not working. Let's restore that, and everybody will feel a sense of justice and equity. Yeah. Um, well, I do. Yes, I agree. We sh it's rather, it would be better for us to be in a meritocracy rather than all this zoning and whatnot. Mm. But um, what I think Liboris is explaining is that for us to heal, to move forward, we must address that time. And the only way to address that time is to make those that were marginalized during that time to feel like they belong. Now, it, I think it's absolutely very clear to anybody. Like one, um, the other day I saw somebody put out a post that, oh, um, it's just in the Igbo people's minds that they're marginalized. No, it's not. I don't sit there and think, oh, I feel marginalized per se, but I can see that. You know, they make it seem like, the thought of an Igbo president is like, you know, something that no one can even imagine. Now, the only way, whilst we're still doing all this zoning nonsense, is really, then nobody's saying that the Igbo man that they're going to choose won't be uh, the right candidate. They will get a right candidate, someone like a Peter Obi or whatever the case may be, depending on who you decide is your, your Igbo standard of whatever. But it's just to zone it to that side. Then maybe even after that, then we can kill this nonsense. But the other thing, like you were saying, you don't want people to, you know, you don't want it to be like that. But then the other option is to break away, which I know you, again, you are not for. No, I'm for, could could I'm for restructuring, if you can, can let me diffuse power from the centre. Okay, but I'm not for this zoning, because well, for me it's like going back. Let me to. agree with you mm. for, for mm. once, that mm. yes, um, let's look for, let's work on meritocracy. Mm. But we cannot also close our eyes to the fact that as we speak today, mm -hmm. Nobody's talking about merit in Nigeria. Yeah, exactly. That's why I told you, I said it is a notorious fact that any zone that produced the presidency or governorship, it has never been too good for them. But as we speak today, you always hear of zoning or no zoning mm. is our so turn. Should, it is should, not our turn. Beat them, join but for all, no, 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 that's not what I'm saying. Why we are looking for that El Dorado? Mm. But the situation we find ourselves now is these people are rotating it among themselves. Mm, okay. Why don't you now say, okay, now the South had uh, Southwest had a turn, mm. South uh, South South had a turn, the North had a turn. There is other other people. There are two options but left. If you want, that let me round up. Let me round up. If you if you want to completely abandon turn by turn and say let's go for merit, of course, everybody likes it. That was why they even voted for Buhari mm. in the first place. That okay for once, yes. let's have somebody apart from people who knew well and say, Look, we this get? is not him. This is not him. Right? But now that some people are saying, let it re remain in the north, let it remain in the, let it go back to the southwest. The question is, let's find the balance. If we cannot go to that marriage, I'm not sure it's balanced, the we're next option for, we're for, for the right is, thing, let it go. Because if, like, if we're going to you get the right thing, let me just bring wait, in sorry, the backstory. The just won't get the right thing. Sorry, wait. If we are going to focus on zoning, then let's do it right. Let's zone. Is there any right way to zone? Well, there is. Let me explain why I have a problem. Obama's presidency didn't benefit any Africans, but they were happy because Li a black Libros, man was you bad. need to let, let us the, discuss this. The, let me just... Ex sorry, mm -hmm. Chika, I'll have to leave the yeah, floor you see, to you. You see, the thing is, we are trapped in rotation. Mm. Are like we trapped? Yeah, that yeah, we're trapped. We're trapped. Let me tell you, no, no, trapped. Because, we're trapped. No, we are trapped. Because let me tell you, no matter that. how you intellectualize this thing, I'm, there are very simple that. people out there, and I know for sure that before you, dis before you remove rotation, 
you have to make sure that it has rotated. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, nobody is going to be happy in this country. Mm, exactly. So that means that, in fact, if we want to have the last presidency based on rotation, yes, then, it then we needs better to just be go to the Finish with presidency. him and then say the post is now open. Sorry, but yeah. let me tell you I'll something. It, the moment you say the like? post is now open, what will happen? You will find that there will be confusion everywhere because we don't even understand anymore how to vote on merit. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, Sandra. So what then happened? Back to you. I'm, right at this point, I'm actually inclined actually, to. Actually. I'm actually inclined <laughs> to agree with his advocacy. Mm. But then the question then is, what then happens if we all clamor behind an Igbo um, presidency, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, the presidency comes from whichever, but perhaps the northern Nigeria again. Mm -hmm. So. Are we going to continue in that slavery mindset? No. Saying slavery. that we still no. have to so wait to for the she's, evil she's person in the rotation. Now. She's not asking a question. She's asking me. No, okay, it's she's actually asking. a question. You she's know, what happens me. if at the end of the day, come 2023, an evil president doesn't emerge, then we have to let wait another quickly, four years. Let me quickly, so that uh, Kene okay, uh, is waiting to reach it. Let me give you let me give you an example. When before the 2015 election, the North were agitating. It's our turn, it's our turn. Then Buhari came, everybody felt this would be on merit. It would, he would take people on merit, he would um, do everything on merit. And then the man came. His first few appointments were from the North. <laughs> the and then people started asking the questions does it mean that it is only good people are from this place? Others mm. are not. And so we all now, that's why, that's why Chuka said we are trapped in rotation. So everybody now started saying, well, Maybe we should also look at this region. Mm. And then you can count all the appointments, all of them, from one side. No sense of belonging. I, I, and so some people so, felt, so, look, so, so, now if that is the case, let us all, all better go our separate way. And then those wounds that came before the war, because these were some of the issues, mm. they started reopening them. Mm -hmm. For us to heal those wounds and move forward, no matter how irresponsible, whether they will misuse the opportunity, Igbo people, you poor people. Please allow me to take, come in. Take one shot. Allow me to come in, please. And then we, in, we please. progress. Um, I, I, because I really do feel we need to look at it and say, if you catch yourself playing this game, you, it's a downward spiral. If, when I look at the story behind Libros' advocacy, the real puppeteers here, people puppeteering us all, it would seem, are these northern elders. That's why the man makes bold to say, we only get behind people. Those are the people we need to dismantle, not to play into their game. Because you can never play. I'm coming. I'm coming. Liberals, yeah, allow me to make my point. Allow me to make my point. Please, please allow me to make my point. The point being that because Chuka seems to believe that somehow if you let the last presidency, then you can now start dismantling. You won't because those people are only fixated on being the ones making. Let me ask you a question. Okay, dismantle it. Dismantle the correct structure. I'm coming. I'm coming. Dismantle it now from the outside. I'm coming. I'm coming. But first of all, you need to say it's obsolete. You need to not play that game because you will never play it as well as them. That's what they want to be the king makers. And if they, they make an Igbo presidency, then there's still the power behind the power. You well, need to, you need to realize that can't, they're the enemy finish, and not, yeah, Kenne, we you can't, can't, you can't this sustain issue. this thing. Yeah. Um, we can't, we can't um, exhaust this topic because it's a very passionate ah, and, uh, okay. and hot one. We we'll raise the issues here so that we can trash it out and explore it way forward. You, you can take it off from there. You're a vital part of this discussion. So keep uh, your comments coming in on our Facebook, Plus TV, hashtag the advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram. I can't say Twitter, Twitter. At Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plus TV Africa.com forward slash the advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. That's it for today. Till next week when we have some fresh brew topic that affect us all. Let's keep advocating for a better society. See you then. Bye-bye. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they want. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize.